Hey guys, my name is Ashley and I am the owner and artist behind Henson Home Furnishings along with my husband Steven. Today we will be participating in Dixie Belle's Paint Pink Out campaign in honor of breast cancer awareness. Dixie Belle will be donating a dollar for every time Paint Pink Out hashtag is used and will be donating up to $5,000 to the Breast Cancer Research Foundation. Also, anybody who uses those hashtags will be put into a drawing and one lucky winner will receive a T-Rose chalk mineral paint as well as a rosé metallic paint. So y'all get those hashtags in with your pink pieces and let's get into this flip. All right, I'm gonna start this piece off by removing the hardware as I do with all of my pieces. And the reason being that I remove the hardware first is so that when I go in to clean this piece with white lightning, I'm making sure that I'm getting any of that dirt and grime that's stuck behind that hardware. So my piece is fully clean before I can start priming. This piece is not real wood. Typically, I prefer to work on real wood pieces, but this piece came in a mismatched set on Facebook Marketplace, and the people were moving, and they said, it's all or nothing. We're not splitting it up or anything like that. So I ended up getting this little guy and figured I could do something fun with it. To get this piece clean, I have mixed some white lightning and hot water in my mister bottle and I'm just spraying it all over the entire piece and wiping it down with a rag. Once I'm done with this, I will come in with some clean clear water and give this piece another wipe down to get rid of any of that white lightning residue left behind. Because this piece has a slick and shiny surface, I decided to apply Dixie Belle's Slick Stick and I am applying it with my angled mini brush. Now typically I would scuff sand, but because this piece isn't real wood, I didn't want to take the chance of burning through that plastic or laminate covering over the MDF or particle board that was underneath. The reason being is if I were to sand through any of the exterior finish of this piece, it would expose some of the MDF or particle board and when I go to apply primer or paint to that, that moisture will absorb into it causing bubbling all over my piece. So I wanted to avoid that at all possible costs and that's another reason why I prefer to work on wood pieces or real wood pieces or I'm even fine with veneer pieces so long as the veneer is real wood. But I try to avoid pieces like this just due to the bubbling if any moisture gets to any of that exposed MDF or particle board. To keep my final finish as smooth as possible, I'm applying the slick stick in long linear strokes and this is going to help minimize the amount of brush strokes that are on my piece. Now after this coat dries, if there is any rough spots and this piece isn't smooth to the touch, I will come in with some sandpaper and lightly sand over the areas just to knock off any of those high points before I end up applying my paint.
Now that my slick stick is completely dry, I can begin painting this piece. I have chosen Dixie Belle's Driftwood and I'm applying it with the angled mini brush. I am working again in long linear strokes to keep the smooth finish on the overall finish of this piece. I will admit that I did not have an overall finish in mind for this piece once I began working on it. And sometimes that happens. Sometimes you start working on a piece without a plan in mind and then you start thinking and developing a plan as you're working on that piece. That's exactly what happened here so I decided to switch gears and use Dixie Belle's Tea Rose instead of the Driftwood and I'm applying the Tea Rose again with my angled mini brush. As I said before, I do want a smooth finish for this piece, so after the first coat of tea rose had dried, I came in with a fine grit sandpaper and just sanded down all of those brush strokes so that I had, again, a smooth surface to work with. Once this piece was sanded all over, I came in with some compressed air and blew away the majority of the sand dust left behind and then followed up with a microfiber towel to wipe any of the remaining dust that the compressed air did not remove.
Now we are on to our second coat of tea rose and if you'll notice the way that I'm applying the paint on the top of this piece, I try to start in the middle and work my way out rather than coming from the outside and working towards the middle. What this is going to do is prevent drips and pools of paint along the edges of your piece. So I always try to work from the middle out just to eliminate any of those drips and any of that paint pooling. For the hardware, I am using Dixie Belle's Gilding Wax and Gold and I'm applying it with a small detail brush. Now I did give this hardware a good clean with some white lightning and hot water off camera and I rinsed it with some clean clear water afterwards and allowed the hardware to sit in the sun to dry. Because this piece is so flat, I did want to give it some more visual interest, so I opted for Dixie Belle's Silkscreen Stencil, and the name of this one is called Delicate Lace. I decided to use the color Drop Cloth for my stenciling, and I will be applying it with the Thingamajig tool. Personally, I absolutely love the Thingamajig. It allows you to apply the paint very thin and very evenly. So you're not wasting a lot of product and I barely used any. This thing is made of silicone so it washes off super easy and it's completely reusable. I highly recommend getting one of these if you're going to be doing these silkscreen stencils. A couple things I love about these silk screen stencils, one is that they are completely reusable. You can just rinse them off with some water after each and every use. You want to make sure that you're not having any paint dry in those meshed portions of the stencil. And then two, they have such pretty detailed patterns that you would not be able to get with a regular conventional stencil. So that's why I opted for this one. I wanted that high detail in this piece. To get this piece all sealed up, I am using Dixie Belle's clear coat in satin and will be applying it with the Dixie Belle angled mini brush. I will be applying a total of three coats to the top of this piece and two coats all over the body. Again, notice my brush strokes. I'm starting in the middle and I'm working my way out just to avoid any drips or pulling on the side of this piece. One thing I love about Dixie Belle's clear coats is they have a longer open time than most. So I was able to apply it to the top of this piece and then come back over the clear coat and smooth it all out without any dragging or any dry marks in this piece. Now it's time to get the hardware back on this piece and it is finally done. 